Two beautiful readings for our reflection today. And again, the first reading is a continuation of yesterday's reading, Acts chapter 5. And today's reading is very deep. Of course, every day's readings are very deep. It says, the context is this. The apostles started preaching the gospel fearlessly but they just created a big problem among the authorities they just called today and told them don't speak in the name of Jesus that name is very powerful and also continued with that word it says what are you trying to do? Are you trying to put all the guilt on us? Here is a psychological thing. Sometimes we try to silence our own conscience by silencing others, the truth. That's what they were trying to do. They thought if we can control these guys, these disciples of Jesus, in a way we can justify our conscience. That's what they were trying to do. But Peter spoke, he said, obedience to God comes first, not obedience to men. Whenever we hear this immediately, our, you know, our, all our uh, social justice and so many things comes in our mind. Obedience to God. We have to obey God. That's the most important thing. And one of the things we need to realize, that obedience, that word comes from a Latin word. The means is Submissiveness, surrendered to the higher authority, which is the Almighty God. And that obedience part comes within us most of the time, rather than external or outward. Because there is a huge fight always happening in our hearts. It's a fight between the good and evil. And sometimes we listen the voice of God, but we say, keep, you know, keep quiet. I don't want to follow this. But what is the real obedience is to listen the voice of God. Be attentive. What the Spirit is speaking. What the Lord wants me to do. In a way, a journey towards that discernment, that climax of that discernment, is that obedience towards God. This is what God wants me to do. And we are all called to do that. That comes, that fight comes in the sanctuary of our conscience. We all have that. There is a huge fight always happens, but some people listen to that conscience and follows. And they are the people who truly Submissive to God. Example, Mother Mary. Obedience is not blind. It needs a careful examination. Like our Blessed Mother is a wonderful example. She was asking how this is going to happen. At the end, she understood. And she said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done according to thy word. That's obedience. And again, my great hero, St. Thomas More. Everyone knows the Thomas More story, that beautiful movie called A Man for All Seasons. What a fantastic title. Anyway, at the end of that, uh, his life, he said, you know, the person who came to um, uh, just to kill him, and he said to him, he gave him a, a wonderful uh, you know, he gave him a tip and said to him, go and tell the king, I was the obedient servant of the king and the most faithful servant of the king.
but God first. Very powerful. Even in our life too, if we are able to say this, our life, we become saints in one word. Moving from there to the gospel. It's a very powerful gospel. Gospel of John chapter 3 at the end, the, we see 31 onwards, the final testimony of John the Baptist about Jesus. And in January, the time I was not here, I hope you heard and you remember, it says, John said, I must decrease, Jesus must increase. Perhaps that can be our lifelong program in our Christian life. We need to, we have to be, we must decrease, Jesus must increase. And continued with 31 onwards we hear today, there is something St. John is offering. God is giving spirit, 34 and 35 verses, without any reserve. We are moving towards the Pentecost. We are preparing ourselves. For that, God is saying to us, you can receive spirit as much as you want. It depends upon the pocket or the capacity you have. So we have to enlarge our heart, enlarge our mind, so that we will be able to receive a huge spirit. And that's the way we will be able to that spirit with every person we meet. Remember, we need to be a reservoir in order to be a channel.